Hi, I'm Lauren Bennett, and I lead our spatial analysis and data science software development team. Forecasting has been key in our response to COVID-19. And there are so many different ways to forecast, including the epidemiological models that many of us have leveraged. Today, I want to show you another approach that focuses on modeling patterns and trends in time series data. And what we want to do is go from the current data in this case, a map of new daily COVID-19 cases to this two-week forecast, where we can see the entire forecast and its uncertainty in this pop-up for Ventura County, California. So, how did we do it? Well, in Pro 2.6, we're introducing a new tool set for doing time series forecasting using both traditional and machine learning based approaches. Within the time series forecasting tool set, there's several tools that we can leverage. We chose exponential smoothing for this data because the time series exhibits some complex trends. Both exponential smoothing and the random forest based approach are really good at dealing with complex time series, including seasonal or cyclical trends in our data, which can be really tricky when forecasting. For this analysis, we pointed to our space-time cube and we chose 14 days to forecast, giving us that two-week forecast. Then, we left season length blank. Now, when we leave this parameter blank, the tool automatically evaluates seasonality for each location. Finally, we had to choose the number of time steps to exclude for validation. This kind of validation is critical when doing time series forecasting, and it's just built right in here. Well, that's all we had to do to get to our forecast. Now, one of the most important outputs of the tool is actually in these pop-ups. Now, within each pop-up, which is automatically generated whenever we run the tool, we can see our measured data in blue, our forecast in orange, and the uncertainty around that forecast. It gives us a really valuable sense of how the model fits location by location across the country. Now, another really important variable to forecast is cumulative cases. Now, the cumulative data follows more of a parametric curve. So we'll use the curve fit forecast tool to model it. Now, in this case, we have to choose a curve type. Now, if we knew that every location followed an exponential curve, for instance, then we would choose that. But we know that some locations have started to plateau, while others are unfortunately on the rise again. So instead, we can choose Auto Detect, which will allow the curve type to vary location by location. Well, the output is our prediction. And again, we can see in the pop-ups our forecast, and we can see the curve type that was chosen. Now, one of the things that I love about this tool set as a geographer is that it can evaluate which model and which curve type that we've tried works best location by location. And we can see that variation across the country. So we can see, for instance, a uh, swaths of the country where exponential smoothing has been chosen in blue, or areas where curve fit was chosen in shades of orange. We can see just how complex modeling this pandemic is and how valuable it is to have multiple methods available and the tools to evaluate them. And there are so many applications for this type of time series forecasting. Everything from forecasting store sales to energy usage. And being able to see the spatial patterns in those forecasts and in the models that created them allows us to understand our world in a deeper, more meaningful way.